Hi there. Welcome. I got this bench from my grandfather. It's been in a barn for quite a few years, as you can tell. Um, it was built by my uncle about 30 years ago, maybe a little more than that, uh, with construction grade lumber and some furring strips. So two by fours and furring strips. You can still see the paint on the end there. Uh, it's obviously stained. Um, the polyurethane's peeling on it. It was built with you know, just regular nails and some screws. Um, and there's even some mortises there on the back side where the furring strips go into the 2 by 4s But this bench has been around for a long time. It's aged. It's sat in a barn. Uh, so I wanted to go about restoring this. Um, so this whole video is to go over how I go about doing that. I started by taking it apart, which didn't take too much to get those armrests off. And bam, it's all apart. Well, mostly. Let's keep going. Here I do my, you know, everybody's favorite thing, sanding. I just took 80 grit to this to knock off as much of the polyurethane as I could and uh, I'll spare you the time-consuming part of watching me go through this. But I really, I, I labeled everything, and I really just wanted to get the majority of the, the junk off the surface of the boards. Here I'm popping apart the seat. I took all the nails. I throw everything in a, in a metal bin, a uh, bucket, and then I'll take everything to the scrapyard at one point. Uh... All the seat pieces I ran through the planer, um, just a single pass on each side, um, just to, again, to get everything cleaned up. There was a couple of pieces that were bowed um, that I wanted to take out the majority of that bow, so I did run those through twice. The two by fours, I ran, you know, one pass on each side. Uh, once that was done, then I, I took everything over to the router table, and I just I just rounded over the corners on everything, because I wanted this to be uh, seating friendly and not build up, you know, a sharp edge on there. So we got everything cleaned up, um, and now we're going to start to do a little bit of prep. I like using this Menwax pre-stain treatment. Um, even though this wood is older, uh, I want to give it a chance to soak up uh, as much of the finish as I can. And this, this conditioner uh, treats the wood and it kind of opens up the fibers so they can absorb the finish that you're going to put on it. Now, it's, it's generally recommended for stain, but it actually, I've, in my experience, it works nice for your finish as well. So if you just want to apply a finish to wood without staining it then this works really well for that as well um one of the other reasons why i didn't sand uh too much or run the lumber through the planer too much is i didn't want to lose a lot of the character that this bench had i didn't want it to lose its identity and make it look like it's something brand new i didn't want it i didn't want to take all the stains out of the wood um because it means something to me. So this, this bench was made by a family member for another family member. So my grandfather and grandmother sat on this for a long time. And it's, it's you know, it's it's got history. So we're going to keep that. So when I apply this, this conditioner, I really let it soak into the wood as best I can. Instructions say to let it sit for a half hour. Um, I will do that, and if I see that it's really soaked in, then I may even apply a second coat of this. Because, again, I, especially this older lumber, it's gotten hard over time, um, so it may, it may absorb at different rates. So now I'm applying um, my quote-unquote stain. Um, so I took a, a stain that I thought would match the color of the original bench, um, which was just the yellow, you know, just the, the yellowed old polyurethane. So I took that, 
um, I took this, it's actually a cherry stain. I mixed it with a little bit of mineral spirits to thin it out. And then I applied that to the wood. And you can actually see here that um, each piece has a little bit of a different color. And again, that's back to, this is old lumber. It's construction grade. And it's clear, it's, you know, it's all absorbing at different rates. Here's I'm putting the, the seat back together. Um, for you eagle-eyed view, viewers, um, you can tell that the gaps aren't the same and again that's that's the way the bench was originally built and i kind of liked it. Uh, it again it gives it some character um and i apologize you eagle eye guys that uh, have to stir up my shiny bald head every once in a while here i start putting the seat back back together um the fact that I rounded off all those furring strips actually helped this step quite a bit. Um, they fit in there really nicely. Now the original armrests here that you see, um, it was square, it was flat, uh, and they were actually, you know, a little bit rotten where the the nail went into the back. So I wanted to make something a little bit more comfortable. So this is the one thing I kind of deviated on. So I I just drew out. You know a little shape of something i thought would fit a little better um and i cut it out of actually a pressure treated fence panel um so it was like 350 or something at the you know big box store um just cut it out on a bandsaw and called it good and then once i applied stain um, they matched up pretty nice so you can see the other one was warped and basically garbage there we go. So another tip, uh, I like to use mug hooks to hang up the pieces I'm finishing. And this is whether you're applying paint or uh, wood finish of any kind. You can put the mug hook someplace not seen. And then as you apply the finish, you can hang it up and it'll dry. Any drips kind of go to the end and you can easily clean those up. If you use finish that comes in cans, such as this Minwax Helmsman that I'm going to use, um, you've likely experienced that the finish will get in the rim and clog it up. I like to take a 4-in-1 tool and pop a couple of holes in the, in the rim. And that keeps the, it allows the finish to drain back into the can. Um, and then on top of that, I'll take some masking tape and create a V. That way it's a little easier to pour. And it... it it doesn't stop all the finish from getting in the rim, but it does cut down on it quite a bit. Now, the finish I'm going to use for this product, I, I thin this out with mineral spirits because what that does is it really allows that finish to soak deep into the wood. So I mix it about 50-50 for my very first coat, and then after that, I will only thin it a, a, about 25%. And then I'll also mix in some tongue oil. But there's a really good uh, YouTube video um, by the Workshop Companion that I will link in the description. I think he does a, a really good job of going over this. I just, I have a little bit of variation on what he does, but I think his is, uh, he does an excellent job of explaining it all. So here I am wiping everything down. I like to use a lint-free cloth or rag. That way it doesn't leave fibers and other debris on the surface as you go. Uh, the first coat is not so critical um, because you're going to be going back over it. I, I like to apply at least three coats. The first coat is thinned down to a 50-50 mix and then subsequent coats aren't thinned as much. So the way I apply my finish is the first coat is a 50-50 mix of uh, spar urethane and mineral spirits and then my second coat is a 50% spar urethane 25% tongue oil 25% mineral spirits and then my third coat is 75% spar urethane and 25% tongue oil those three coats um, really penetrate deep into the wood especially when we're talking about pine like this here that really needs as much protection as it can when it's outside. Um, and it, it leaves a, a very durable 
um, long lasting finish that doesn't tend to peel like the old school just straight up polyurethane. The finish that was on this originally was polyurethane and it lasted quite a long time obviously but I wanted something a little more durable because this is going to sit on my front porch. I live in the northeast so it's going to get snow, rain, hail, sleet, you name it. Um, but the main thing is it's going to sit in the sun uh, so where, where my front porch is, it'll get sun from noon through 7, 8 o'clock at night. So now here's a little bit of a before and after. Well, so here it is, sitting on my front porch. Uh, I tried to do a little audio and a little uh, video out front with me sitting on it, um, but there's a little bit of traffic right now, so um, I'll just do this instead. Uh, I think it turned out really good. It's not brand new, but man, it looks great compared to what it was. Uh, I'm really happy to bring this thing back to life, and I'm really happy that it can get used again. You know, one of the things I really want you to get out of this is that this could be built with a circular saw and a hammer, or a screw gun if you want to use screws. But there's no special tools needed to build something like this. You also don't need to go spend a ton of money on fancy lumber to build this. This can obviously be done with all construction grade lumber and still have something that you, you can be really proud of. Now on the other hand, if you wanted to go buy some oak and make something like this, yeah, it's going to look great, it's going to last a long time too but it's, it's all budgetary. So at this point, I'd really like to say thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope you like it, and if you do, I hope you hit the like button uh, and subscribe, because I've got a lot more ideas and I think a different aspect that I really want to bring to this channel. So stay safe, stay creative, and God bless. Thank you.